Rachel Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about stealth camping while through hiking. First, just so that we're all on the same page here as to what stealth camping actually is, it's pretty much just camping when you're trying to not be seen. And this is typically going to take place near an urban area or just somewhere in general that you're not supposed to be camping. The first time I heard the term stealth camping is when I was through hiking the Appalachian Trail. But the hiker lingo out there as far as stealth camping goes is just an interchangeable term for dispersed camping. So basically on the AT you're going to hear people refer to stealth camping as anything that's not right by a shelter. But I just want to make it clear what type of stealth camping I'm talking about in this video. Let me also add that yes, I think it would be best to not have to be in a situation where you have to worry about stealth camping. I'm not somebody who just likes to break the law for fun and give through hikers a bad name. But when you're out on a long distance hike at the mercy of your own two feet, sometimes you'll find yourself in situations that you didn't foresee happening. Typically by planning, you can avoid this most of the time, but there just might be some situations that are out of your control. Let me give you a couple of personal examples. First, I was through hiking the Continental Divide Trail and I had two infected ingrown toenails. The next stop that I had coming up was Yellowstone National Park. I knew that they had some clinics in the park and any real towns were like hours away from the national park. Once we got into the national park boundary, it took multiple hitches and quite a few hours for me and Aaron to make it to the closest clinic. We ended up getting lucky and getting there right before closing time. So once we walked out of the clinic, we realized, well, now it's after dark and we were already having trouble getting a hitch in the national park. So after dark seriously decreases the likelihood. There was no Uber around or anything like that and we were miles and miles from the trail. So you might think, we'll just get a room at the lodge. Well, if any of y'all have ever stayed at a lodge in a national park, you might know that the prices are astronomical. They're steep when you're not on a through hiking budget, but especially when you're in that situation. So we really didn't have any viable options other than, hey, let's go find the densest little grouping of trees that we can in this village area in Yellowstone National Park and stealth camp. Another instance was in Rocky Mountain National Park while through hiking the Continental Divide Trail. And in this instance, you have to have a special permit to camp in the park for the section that you're hiking through. But it's hard to apply for that because you don't know the exact dates that you're going to be there. So most hikers just set themselves up to hike through the park section in one day. Well, that sounded great and fine and we felt like we could do it. But some days your body is just exhausted and you're not feeling it. So we found ourselves on a several mile road walk towards the end of that stretch of Rocky Mountain National Park. It was getting late, it was already after dark, and we found some pit toilets and took a break, and then we thought, you know, why don't we just stealth right here, cowboy camp behind the pit toilets, we'll wake up super early, maybe even just take a several hour nap, and then get up and continue out of the park. Well, I guess there must be like cameras or <laughs> some kind of audio recording device there, to monitor these areas because literally almost as soon as we made that decision and walked up there, a park ranger pulled up and spotlighted the area that we were standing. We talked to him and he was actually really cool about it. He offered to give us a ride to the park boundary, but of course wanting to continue our footsteps, we just trudged along and we didn't end up setting up camp until after 1 a.m. sometime. Other instances where I have stealth camped include long road walks where it's not necessarily illegal to set up on the side of the road, but you don't really want to have people knowing where you're at, just a random tent on a roadside. Or maybe it's a situation where you're setting yourself up to go into town the next day. So you're on the trail, but you're camping as close to the roadside as possible. You still want to be more stealthy and not have general traffic and population knowing somebody's sleeping in this tent on the roadside. There may be many reasons that you choose to camp in a certain location and not be noticed or seen. 
So to do that successfully, here are some tips to help you. The first tip I have for you is use apps for shared information. So you're probably not the first person to be in this particular predicament and through hacking history. And if you use something like the Far Out app for navigation, there are pinned waypoints in there where folks may have commented like, hey, on this long road walk, I had to stealth camp behind the bush at mile XYZ. Someone else mentioned the I over Lander app. I don't have any personal experience with this and I'm not sure that it mentions spots for through hiking, camping slash stealthing but it's something to look into, especially if you're trying to stealth camp and you're not through hiking. Next, use a shelter that blends in. When you are selecting your gear for through hiking, keep this in mind that you may want to camp in areas, like I said, on trail, but near the roadside where you don't want a bright orange tent popping out and notifying everybody that you're right there. So something that's more olive drab or some sort of earth tone is gonna blend into the foliage and be less noticeable. There are pros and cons to every choice you make with gear selection though. So just keep in mind that with this, you're also not gonna stand out as much to search and rescue if they're looking for you. So there may be some sort of sweet spot trade-off where, okay, your shelter blends in, but something like your rain gear or puffy coat that you could display on that shelter if you were trying to be found could be used. Next, don't set up in a wide open area, like in a field of some sort. You wanna use any sort of structures you can find or natural buffers like shrubbery to help camouflage you from open view. Also set up low. If you're using bushes and shrubbery to cover you up and you've got some sort of shelter that you can kind of control the height, like if it sets up using trekking poles, it might behoove you to have a little less headspace and set it up a little bit lower so you are actually below that natural cover. Consider cowboy camping. If it doesn't seem like it's gonna rain, this is typically what I do if I'm stealth camping because it just makes setup much easier. You don't have to make as much noise and quite a scene setting up your shelter and you can pack up easily in the morning too for a quick exit. Also throughout the night, this gives you the lowest profile, you're the closest to the ground if you're just cowboy camping. And that's actually what we did in Yellowstone National Park when we had to camp in that clump of trees. We just hunkered down and slept right on the ground. And it also works really well if you can find some downed trees so that you sleep right up next to one of those logs. Avoid having a fire. I feel like this one's pretty much a no-brainer. If you've seen any kind of Western or Red Louis L'Amour books, then you'll know the fire always gets you found. If you must have a fire, then check out the Dakota fire hole method. That seems pretty cool. I haven't personally tried this, but the idea is the flames are not quite as high, maybe right as you're starting the fire, the tips of the fire will come up above the hole, but also it's supposed to help the smoke dissipate, so you're not bringing attention in that way either. But obviously your best bet is to just not risk it. Next, avoid cooking. Again, having a flame in the pitch black dark is gonna be pretty noticeable to the eye, even at a distance. So you can either cook before you ever get to the spot that you're gonna stealth, or you can maybe just eat some snacks for dinner instead of busting out your stove and the flame. And then later the next day, you could always eat your meal in place of those snacks. But if you just really need to cook or you think you're in a stealthy enough spot that it might not be so noticeable, then you could dig a hole in the ground, put your fuel canister and stove in there so that the flame is actually below the ground and not as visible or use some sort of other blocker. And maybe also try to cook your least scented meal. Next, set up in the lowest amount of light possible without having to turn on a headlamp. So you wanna wait, maybe not until complete pitch black dark, but to where it's dim enough light that you can see close up in front of you and what you're doing as far as setup goes. If you do have to use a light for some reason, then trying to make it as dim as possible is a good idea because again, that bright light in the darkness is really gonna pop out like a sore thumb. So this may mean putting your headlamp on the dimmest setting of red that you have. 
and then maybe even tying a bandana around it to dim the light even further. Again, with the Yellowstone story, we didn't use any headlamps at all because we decided to cowboy camp and we were able, you know, to fill around and kind of figure out the things we needed to pull out to just be able to lie on the ground and go to sleep. So in addition to setting up late, you also want to leave early. If you can get up and at them as the light is slowly starting to appear in the sky and you've again got just enough light that you can see what you're doing to pack everything up and get out of there, then that's gonna be your best bet to not be detected. We didn't do a good job of this in Yellowstone and the sun was definitely up by the time we were starting to pack up and we could hear folks walking around that grouping of trees and near the lodge that we were stealthed by and that was definitely an uncomfortable feeling. So I would have much rather had everything packed up right before the sun came up and already been headed out. And finally, leave no trace. This should be something that you practice regardless of where you're camping, right in front of everybody or stealthing. Just leave it as good as you found it, if not a little better depending on how folks did before you. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today on stealth camping. If any of y'all have stealth camped during a through hike or a long backpacking trip, please feel free to share any tips that I left out in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, don't forget to share it with a friend and we will see y'all next time. Hey y'all, Dixie here. Today, I wanna talk to you about stealth hiking <laughs> next and I had an infected ingrown toenail. No, oh, I had two infected. Yeah. First, I was hiking the continental. Next, when you're salamping, salamping, why?